Today is Wednesday, the 15th. August 15th. August 15th. 2018. 2018. And it's Wine Week. Here at Level 1 Tech. Part 2. Let's have a drink for Wine Week. He's already feeling it. Today we're going to be talking about business news and robots and design. There's only one design story, but we are talking about design, so. Officially, we're talking about design. Even if it's just one story, it still counts. Now let's start off. Actually, let's start off. Chris just did a check. The dog's asleep. The dog is asleep. I was worried that maybe she had somehow found a way out of the crate and was tearing my office apart as we speak, but nope, she was asleep. Now, Friday night. Well, let's do a quick Rue update. Yeah. Rue's doing well. Um, I brought her into the office for the first time. She's learning. Last week. I just brought her in for about 20, 30 minutes and let her smell everywhere and kind of get acclimated to the office. And But you've talked about she's learning to sit and not attack people when you're on walks and things like that. Right? Well, she's she can do sit and lay down for a long time, but we're still working on her, like, uh, what is it called? Like, in a, like, her inhibition. So, like, when someone walks by, when we're walking, like, I get her to sit and then do a stay. She'll do that about mm, 70% of the time. Other times, she's like, ooh, person, and wants to follow them. So, we established Friday night during the Twitch stream that Rue had amassed quite a few good girl points. She has, yeah. And you said that she would be rewarded with chicken tendies. Did that happen? Well, she didn't get any tendies. Oh, my god. She got a french fry. She didn't get any tendies. No tendies? No tendies. Wow. I ate the tendies. I was hungry. I hadn't eaten dinner you before. I got we started. a five piece and give her the extra one. I gave her a three. I got a three piece. Oh. I got a three How piece. How is she supposed to respect the the institution of good girl points when you don't come with the tendies when she gets in? She up? gets pets and treats and That's not the same. bits of food. She has to do a trick wow. for it, though. She got to work for it. She didn't wow. get stuff for free. I'm going to call social services. That sounds like communist BS. <laughs> Well, let's talk about Qualcomm. <laughs> Qualcomm's been in the news, and Qualcomm, Qualcomm's legal department might be the hardest working legal department in the history. It seems like they're, they're working a lot. Always a lot of being overtime. sued, suing. They have no shortage of work. Well, in Taiwan, it turns out that the Qualcomm legal department, which a bunch of wizards apparently, have worked up a deal where well, they're not going to pay most of a $773 million fine, and they get to keep charging rent for their patents. Now, I'd like to have a correction here, because it's not actually a wizard that's misrepresenting what the lawyers actually do. They do not perform any sort of magic whatsoever. Legal magic? No. We are legally not allowed to say that the lawyers <laughs> perform magic. So, yeah, and Qualcomm, God knows what they... Basically, they agreed to invest a bunch of money in Taiwan, I think. Probably, yeah. We'll, we'll build more factories here. Yeah. And, that's what you need. And so Taiwan said, hey, you know that fine you were going to pay us? Forget it. Just invest that money and keep paying rent or charging rent on those uh, patents that you've got. And we're cool, bro. Wendell will probably be visiting a new Qualcomm factory come next May. If Wendell were here, we would get a five-minute Taiwan anecdote. Never get tired of those. Oh, this is the mobile site. And now, how thoughtful he looks. My favorite kind of story: a Tesla story. Take a drink. Tesla's Elon Musk faces investors. Oh, we should drink. We got to drink for uh, government corruption because that's some bullshit with Taiwan. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and back to Musk. Elon Musk's faces investor lawsuit. My reading really struggles the more wine I drink. We might have got this a little out of... I think I just included one story here. So we have two Elon Musk stories. If you haven't been following, Musk... Let's see what this is. I might have put these in the wrong order. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Oh. All right, let's... Let's, let's pretend, back up. Let's pretend the last 30 seconds never happened. <laughs> and let's first talk about Elon Musk tweeting that he wants to take Tesla private. And he wants to take it private. To uh, screw the people who short sailed it. That's that's the TLDR. Well, he I think he's tired of the oversight that public trading <laughs> brings. To he's tired of people questioning his authority. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't care for that. So he said he wanted to go private. I think at the time Tesla was trading at three seventy. 
It rose like 11% after he announced it. He said he wanted to go private at 420. Blaze it. <laughs> of course, because Elon Musk loves to hit the bomb. Does he? No. Oh, I didn't know. Well, I mean, yeah. I don't know. There's no, there's no proof of that. Just like there was no proof that that guy was a pedophile, but it didn't stop him from tweeting about it. So yeah, he, when he said 420, the, the stock jumped up because of course, hey, why not buy a stock at this price if you think you're going to get bought out by the company at a much higher price, all right? Makes sense. The problem is he said he had secured funding. Now when it comes to the stock market and stuff like that, there are a lot of rules. A ton of rules. So many. One of those rules says if you're going to get on Twitter and talk some bullshit about having funding, you better have funding. You better be able to prove it. And so far, he has not brought the proof, which brings us to this next article, which you've never seen before. You've never seen. <laughs> which is the, the investors are planning a lawsuit. Oh, uh, I got the giggles. I'm sorry. <laughs> you've hit it. <laughs> Look at no, show how much wine you do. It's not even past the label. <laughs> I just suddenly got the giggles. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. Uh, uh, look at this face. Yeah, investor. Yeah, this is a man, a pensive man. <laughs> <sighs> Tell me more. Oh, oh. An asshole. So yeah, he uh, he's getting sued, but you know he gets sued a lot. I don't know if anything will come of that. But he is also getting investigated by the SEC, and he's going to need to come up with who those investors are, where that money is coming from. Uh, if you, the, spoiler alert, it's probably no one. If you buy every Tesla share at $420, it's $71 billion. True. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of wine. A lot of uh, Model 3s, Model S's. Yes. <laughs> a lot of wine. Oh, we had three stories. We did. So, yeah, this is about the board, and the board has met and answered it's, questions, and they're like, yeah, we've never heard We don't that. know what he's talking about, Nobody which knows. is not good news for Elon Musk, because if they don't know, then he has to disclose it, and he refuses to disclose it, so it's like we're in this weird stalemate. Yeah. And then so, flashback to pensive Elon Musk. There's also talk of Saudi Arabia buying like 2 or 4% of Tesla. Don't they just buy horses? Well, they have a lot of oil, which is interesting because his product doesn't use oil. Well, around here, huh? well, around here, any Saudi people who are, who move to Kentucky are typically people who are really into the horse industry, the thoroughbred industry. Yeah, they love horses. They do. They do. Big horse fans. Now, maybe they're just trying to like complete the trifecta of transport. The trifecta. The horses. Yeah, but the trifecta. Oil is a, and a horse gambling. Electric. Term. Oh so yeah. That, that worked out really well. I did that on purpose. Yeah. So brilliant. Nah, we've got a lot of uh, pro Tesla people in the comments. We do people love Tesla. I, uh, I mean, whatever. If you like the cars, I just don't really understand the weird people who want to constantly defend Elon Musk as a person because uh, he seems sort of unlikable to me. Well, I think they like that there's a famous artist. I don't know Who that Elon has, Musk is, though. Oh, but you ever see him back in the PayPal days before he got his confidence? No. Yeah, he was a loser. <laughs> so, billions of dollars, though, they'll, you know, that'll, that'll help your confidence. Yeah. So, I think that gives them that hope. It's like, someday I'll be like Musk. I don't know. I don't, he just seems like an unlikable person to me, regardless of how much money he has. I don't know. If he... Maybe that's not true. Maybe he's if, really lovely. What though. if you had the opportunity to hang out with him? I would take it just because it's like, well, I mean, might as well. <laughs> well, no, think how good that content would be for this channel. Well, not only that, but I mean, you're eating at the nicest restaurants and staying at nice hotels, and I mean, hanging out with Musk is gotta be cool. Why right? would I? Why would I stay at a hotel with Musk? What are you implying? Well, he's saying that. Well, I'm not saying he's. What are you, you saying? No, no, you're just his friend. And he's like, hey, let's go to Greece for the weekend. You know, as one does. I guess yeah, if you're rich, you probably do. Yeah. If you're rich, tell us what you do on the weekends in the comments. And invite us. And invite us, yeah. We, we would probably not go because we would assume that you were lying. But Well, we talked about ISPs in the last episode, which you should go watch if you haven't. And now we have some more interesting ISP news that's not necessarily related to the government. Before we talk about the story, we should really zoom in on this stock photo. We have this a is, control uh, plus just to like really Mr. get in there. Mr. James Carey. Ugh. 
<laughs> you don't like him? Ugh, this that picture is so spooky. That was uh, when he decided to do serious roles. Oh. Have you seen that? No. You've never seen Cape Boy Eye? Wow. Chris has never seen any movies. I've seen some. Not many. No. I literally, through high school, just stayed in the basement. What was the one? We and drew pictures. In the basement? What's the one we talked about on the podcast? The Fly. She's oh. never seen The Fly. She didn't even know anything about The I Fly. I offered up three very solid B-movie recommendations. <laughs> the podcast hasn't come out yet, though. Our editor oh, hasn't had a chance to, oh, that's right. to do that. But it'll, it'll, it well, should be out this week. Let's try and focus on the topic at hand, which is Big Cable. They're trying to get rid of the rule that allows competitive small market ISPs to, sell, to resell their access at a government-mandated price. They don't like the idea that they can use your infrastructure and offer a better product by building out fiber and other copper infrastructure to rural areas and offer it at a government mandated price. They want to strike down that government mandated price so that they're more competitive, even though they refuse to expand the network. That sounds shitty. That is, you're drinking without prompt here. I think we're getting you into some interesting territory. Wouldn't say I'm drunk. I'm like, this is the point usually where I would stop drinking. Because yeah, I started to feel Which it and I'm like, okay. Which is time to power through that. Because it's like, yeah. okay, I need to come back down. I'm giggling too much now. This is level two. Level three is Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, not a shock, but the big ISPs are lobbying against it. Rather than spending all that money we give them through subsidies and taxes to actually build the network, they hire lobbyists. And try to destroy the little guy. That's what that story is about. So. It's uh, easier than just doing the work. It's nothing new. And on the topic of screwing the little guy, which is what the big companies love to do, Wells Fargo, they had a little problem. Hun hundreds of customers have lost their homes. Cost a couple of people their homes. Because they foreclosed on them because of a computer glitch. So these are people who should have had a... Uh, refinancing they qualified for refinancing mm. but for whatever reason the computer system was like nah you know what let's just foreclose <laughs> you know it'd be easier just to eh, just boot them out of their homes that's does that worry you as someone who's looking ryan's been looking for a home i think we've talked about that some on the show uh maybe but see uh i, I might not finance I got, oh. I got some relatives with some cash so oh. i might do it while i'm through then that way I don't have to deal with it. What if things. they have a computer glitch and they <laughs> foreclose on your home? Actually, that couldn't happen because you probably do their tech support, right? I, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm not too worried about being able to make payments. No. So, yeah. Well, these people weren't either. They might have, you don't know these people. I don't know them. The computer did. I think we said, should do a, uh, a Wells Fargo drink for that. I don't like booting, Wells Fargo. Booting people out of their homes drink. Well, we talked about Movie Pass last week, and Movie Pass has a problem. Movie Pass charges nine ninety nine per month for their service, and uh, here's and let's do some advanced mathematics, right? Nine ninety nine a month. I'm not in the position to do that. Well, but just bear with me. Nine ninety nine per okay. month. Let's round it. Let's say ten dollars. Right? All right. Let's make it easy. Average movie ticket is what fifteen dollars. Well, if you go matinee, it's like seven or eight. Well, let's average it. Let's say the average is 10 then, right? Because right. it's 15 or 7. Right? Yeah. Okay. Let's call it 10. So they're going to charging you $10 a month, and every time you go to the movies, it's $10. So if you go twice... Pensivemusk.jpg. That's 100% too much money to make money with MoviePass. So uh, they're hoping that you will stop going to the movies. What what is the dark the, the dark pattern that you would do as a UX designer to make people not want to use your app less? Do you start hiding buttons, making them only appear on certain days of the month? <laughs> well, so they've tried a number of things. They've tried peak pricing that they called it, which is you're going to pay like a couple extra bucks to go to a movie. But I think it was like three or four dollars, which still doesn't make up the difference. So they're still losing money. And then they've tried blacking out new releases, right? 
You want to go and watch what's the hot new movie this week? Uh, isn't the Venom? I don't think the Venom movie's out yet, but I think that's everyone keeps talking about the trailer. To People me. will definitely want to watch the. You won't be able to watch the Venom movie with Movie Pass. No way. Because it's oh, actually mine. So it's too hot. But anyway, they've tried several different ways, and the big thing that they're trying to do. They want to sell your data, right? That's what that's what they're really angling for. So if you're making a movie, they want you to come to Movie Pass and be like, "Hey, give us data about who's going to watch this movie." That's what they want their business model to be, but it doesn't seem to be working all that well. I haven't used the app. Does it have like a section where it's like, "Can you tell us what upcoming releases you're interested in?" That would be a cool no, feature. No, I don't think it's about what well, it might, but the the way that they're doing it is actually tracks your location. So yeah, I remember that part. Right after you, you purchase your, your digital tickets, it watches everything that you do. So if you go to... If you go out to eat after... Let's say that you go to Walmart, right? And you buy some cheap Skittles. Riot juice. You get the big, the big Skittle bag. Oh. And you smuggle it in. I would never do something so They're going to know. They're going to know that you do that. Well, the answer, we actually don't have to speculate. Because MoviePass has actually given us the answer later in the week. They are limiting three per month. That does not seem like that good of a deal. Well, it's still, it's still good, better, it's but... It's still a good deal. If you're going to watch three movies a month, it's still a good deal. Because you're paying $10, and you're seeing three $10 movies. The issue is that average. there's not really... Usually, there's not three good movies per month coming out. Is there one? I, people... I know a lot of our subscribers like superhero movies. Personally, not a big fan of a lot of superhero movies, and there's not really much else coming out very often, at least not around here. I don't know anything about the movies. I don't, I don't watch the movies. I just watched the Thanos movie last week. Oh, yeah, you mentioned that on the stream the yeah. other day. I liked it. Was it all right? It was okay. I mean, I wouldn't pay $15 to see it. You said it wasn't as you. He actually read the comic book, so he knew like what was going on. But that was back when I was a kid. You know? Yeah. I just realized we're like those news anchors from the show where the two old ladies get really drunk every morning. I don't know that show. It's, like, it's not Good let's, Morning America. It's something like that. Though. Let's do a uh, terrible business model drink. Okay. So, uh, I gotta, movie I gotta pass. I got faster because it's starting to taste sour again. Oh. Well, you need to just get go harder. Go hard on that purple toad. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, MoviePass wants you to, is, is they're going to limit you to three, so it's going to be $10 a month, but you could still beat the system if you watch three movies. They're hoping you watch one. Because that's where they're profitable. If you watch one movie and they sell your data, they might be able to make money. I think they're going to go out of business. I think they will too. It seems yeah. like, they're, I mean, they're already struggling. There's a new story about them every week, so. Yeah. It's a good idea, just not really sound financially. So who would think that that was a good idea for a business. What a segue. <laughs> BBC wants Microsoft to expose Doctor Who leaker. We did a story about this a while back. Um, some pre-composited footage was leaked from the new Doctor Who season. Didn't have any of the special effects, but it was leaked anyway. Um, and they're trying to figure out who done it. Who let the dogs out? Who let the leaks out? Who? 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 Who left Rue? In the office so she could pee. She's not peeing. She's asleep in her crate. No, that. Yeah, so they are going after Microsoft and subpoenaing DMCA subpoena to Microsoft because the file that was leaked was found on OneDrive. Pro criminal tip. Don't use OneDrive. Well, how, else, how else am I supposed to conveniently transfer <laughs> files? So they are... They want to subpoena Microsoft to give up the identity of that OneDrive customer to find out who leaked Doctor Who and punish them. Do you think Microsoft is like huge Doctor Who fans and they're like, fuck it, we'll do it? Uh, Hell yeah. I don't think the the board of Microsoft, they probably aren't. You don't, don't think so? No, no, no. They're too rich. I could see Bill Gates being in the Doctor Who. Mm, but he's not involved. He's in not, that. no. He's probably not yeah. involved in the day-to-day. -day. It's... Uh, the the executive board of Microsoft, they don't even know what Doctor Who is. They're too busy doing like... Uh, Lines of cocaine. Just like eyes wide shut orgies and, you know, eating at Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. That's the two things that they do. The That's only it. two things that they do. They go from one to the other. They get hungry, they go to Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. And they discuss business. <laughs> and they, they hang out there until they get horny enough to go back to the orgies. Ugh. 
And then every once in a while they go to the Microsoft office and they're like, they yell at their secretary. Software as a service. And they smack somebody and then they go back to the orgy. And the developers are in a corner crying somewhere. Well, how about Alexa? How about her? I like doing Alexa stories. Alexa! Because it triggers people's Alexa. Yeah, yeah. And you can do things like... Uh, Alexa. I think we've already done that one. Uh, we've already done adult diapers. What's an embarrassing thing we can have Alexa order? Corks. That's what they show in this picture for this article. <laughs> Alexa, buy wine corks. And uh, here what, they go. What? Confirm. And there you go. Congratulations on your wine corks. Just like the owner of this fine set of wine corks in this story. What a weird Look, thing to put next to your Alexa. We have a wine cork. Look at that one. We do. Mine was a screw off cop. You so. can't see it's got... Uh, like molecules branded onto it. I think we talked about that Educated last time. Educated guess. I've forgotten everything we've done so far. So yeah, Alexa, uh, turns out, according to this study, nobody's really buying stuff with Alexa. It kind of makes sense. I mean, a lot of times you want to check the reviews, you want to see right. photos. Which and, yeah. Well, I mean, the photos, though, like, you can't really see that with Alexa. That's true. So it's like, I'm, if I'm here, I might as well just order it while I'm at my computer instead of through Alexa. Can you be like, Alexa, audibly describe the photos of this product to me? <laughs> Some ratchet hoe. What? What? Ratchet hoe. <laughs> so I, I buy clothes online. And it seems to draw weird people in the review section. Like, people will be like, hey, here's me in my bikini. Here's 30 shots of me in my bikini right. that I ordered. Or like... My leggings that I ordered. And it's like, what? You could have just shown me two pictures here. Like, I didn't need to see your entire selfie catalog. It's, it's a personal problem, but I thought I'd bring it up. That's a good... You know, when you do selfies on Imager, people will downvote those. But it's on Amazon review. What a weird well, place that, to put your... But that's your what in. I'm saying. Like, selfies on Imager, you, you're not going to get traction. Selfies on Facebook, it's, it's going to be a limited audience, right? Selfies on Amazon. Everybody's going to see that sweet now, ass. Now, some people will, like, black out their face. And it's like, okay, that makes sense because you're well, just trying to review the clothing. That's fine. I mean, but still. But some people, like, they just post tons of photos of themselves. Imagine how affirming it is when somebody replies to your Amazon review with some ass shot. It's like, yo, you've got a sweet ass. They don't say anything about the product at all. <laughs> like, the leggings look really good. Or how did they fit? Was the waistband, did it get loose after a couple washes? That's all I want to know. I didn't need to see 30 pictures of you. Uh, you know, I don't buy leggings on Amazon, but maybe now I'll go Do you check buy them out. through that ad that we get on the news every week? I don't, no. You don't buy any? I don't buy a lot of leggings. Probably should. You should unsubscribe because he doesn't buy leggings. <laughs> I don't think anybody's looking for that. I don't think it, I think people are probably thinking we're far off the rails. Oh. We're way far well, off the listen, rails this time. Last time when I did Drunk News. How far off? I didn't watch all of it. I just skimmed through it. I, uh. I mean, look, look where I am. You're pretty far down I'm in that bottle. Far. Your liver I'm, is screaming for help I'm right now. I'm further than I got last time. And uh, it's good. Well, see, Krista was like 30 minutes late, so I had nothing to do. So you just started pre-gaming. I put the, Wendell had destroyed the studio. Wendell's like a, a destructive force, and he just he moves the lights and he destroys everything. So I put that all back together, and I still had 30 minutes to myself, and I was like, Mom, I'll just drink, you know? Take a couple of these Advil <laughs> or whatever mucus. The wow, you gave away the secret. All right, well now we'll tell you. So I had the idea. The Tide Pods joke was had run its course. It, no one was doing the Tide Pod challenge I think we, anymore. Yeah, we agreed. So we, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we had red pills in the martini glass? Because you know <laughs> we're giving you that red pill knowledge, right? And that's and we're making fun of that, right? But I bought one package of Alka-Seltzer Severe Mucus and Cold. And it didn't quite fill up the glass, but in case you... Uh, You're going to dump those all over the damn carpet. No, look at that. The other thing I learned, I don't know if this glass was always compromised. I think the Tide Pods, they pulled down here in this, like right above the stem. This will not hold liquid anymore. It leaks. Oh... So if you're thinking, you know, it's a little late, but I want to do the Tide Pod Challenge, recommendation, don't. <laughs> don't drink it out of a glass. You'll ruin the glass. You'll ruin the glass. Maybe your esophagus, too. 
Oh. Sorry. We are trademark off the rails. So let's talk about Verizon. Now we talked about um, the uh, smaller ISPs in the last episode. Yes. That was the last episode, I believe. Was it not? Yes. Well, this story is about Verizon lying about their coverage map, which would prevent government money from going to those smaller ISPs. I'm not surprised by that at all. As someone from a real community, not surprised. Oh, let me tell you, the house hunt is... It's. I want a house with some woods. I want woods and a mountain. We're in Kentucky, damn it. You I can should, find, let, let's let the purpose of the thing, you can find that kind of property easily around here, yeah, but not with internet connection. No, there's no internet connectivity. Which is absolutely. the same issue we're describing in this article. Oh man, there's that one house and it's like 23 acres of mountain, a decent house, beautiful, no internet access. And that's, that breaks my heart and I blame Verizon because they're lying about their coverage, man. What's that? That's the breaks. Them's that's the breaks. A, that's a Verizon uh, corruption, corruption story. Corruption drink. You know, I'm not really feeling it anymore. Well, it's double down. I think um, maybe my liver's stronger than I think. Maybe it metabolizes. It I think you need. To, you can outdrink that liver. Just get a new one. <laughs> well, this we've moved on to the section of the news, which is. Not really news at all, and surprising to no one. People still don't like their cable companies. Latest telecom survey finds. That's it. Basically, no one likes them. Everyone hates their internet service. Everyone hates their cable company, with two exceptions. Armstrong. Armstrong operates in Kentucky somewhere. Does it? Yeah. Never heard of that. I've never. It must be Western Kentucky. And Google Fiber. Those are the two companies that people actually have good things to say about. Not Appalachian Wireless? <laughs> not Appalachian Wireless. Was that wireless. not included in the survey? Well, they're wireless. This is, uh, you know, wire, uh, copper, well. and fiber. Uh, but everybody else hated it across the board. Shocking no one. So, yeah, if you hate your... <laughs> I feel like we didn't even need to include that story. Like, water's wet. Let's keep moving. Essentially. Yeah. But if you hate your ISP, you hate your cable provider... Guess what? Everybody does. You're not special. Get over it. No, don't get over it. <laughs> yeah, you should still be angry about it. Scream at the, uh, I don't know. The moon. God, I'm t- uh, He's just, you're getting worse. A Jeep, well, I want to okay. catch up. Okay. Come Tribune on, terminates 2.9 billion merger no, with I'm rival not, Sinclair. I haven't put it on the screen yet. Give us a ketchup drink. Now. The story. Tribune terminates 3.9 billion merger with rival Sinclair. So we talk about a Jeep pie as we often do. He has concerns about this merger. He actually came. So he's supposed to be Sinclair's water boy. Right? I mean, he's all he has been. He changed the UHF rule. He's your leader. He changed a bunch of regulations. He looked like he was doing everything he could to get this merger done. And then at the last minute, he was like, no, I don't know. I've got concerns about this. So... It was shut down, it was sent to review, and Tribune was like, forget it, we're not even going to bother with the review, it's already dead, we're pulling out. And, on top of that, they're suing Sinclair. And they're saying that Sinclair was just too aggressive. They tried to cheat in so many ways that they ruined the deal, and they're suing them because of that. They're not wrong. Didn't you say, too, that one of them was like a cousin? Well, what Sinclair tried to do, you're not allowed to own a certain percentage of the news, right? Yeah. Because it's like... It's a monopoly. If Sinclair owns this much of the news, then we have to worry about the news. Yeah. So they were like, well, we're going to sell these stations to to put us below the, the cap. But those stations was like the CEO's cousin or somebody financially linked to Sinclair. It was obvious what they were doing. They were just cheating. And so, yeah. Good job, Sinclair. You were too aggressive. Your hubris has destroyed you once again. And even a they're jeep high. Even a jeep high. They're still, they're still doing fine. They're doing good. Well, we can't do an episode of Level One News. Let's do a. Uh, 
Well, that's not really corruption. I mean, they kind of got busted for their corruption. But yeah. you, you need to catch up anyway. So it's just... Well, you, should, you don't need to catch up to anybody. His liver is just... Ah, <sighs> uh, you know what? It's fine. I do it for the people. I told you I'm a man of the people. Mm. We can't do an episode of Level 1 News without talking about the number one buzzword. And Krista loves topics to do with this. Oh, the blockchain and cryptocurrency. Blockchain is really... People just say like blockchain and they don't even know what it means. <laughs> yeah, nobody understands it. But if you're in Australia, you can invest in a bond, a bond issuance that is going to be recorded on the blockchain. So a regular bond. Well, it's a regular bond, but... But blockchain. So when you... The way bonds work, here's a little financial aside for all of you level one. The government auctions off debt through bonds and you buy a bond but there is a secondary market for bonds where you can buy and sell and if the rate changes then you might make money or lose money on, money on that secondary sale so when you buy and sell it on the secondary market it becomes the ownership of somebody else they're going to be using the blockchain to track these bond transactions after the fact and that just sounds thrilling well, listen, if you've got a lot of money and you want a safe investment, you're into bonds. I thought you were into cryptocurrency. Totally safe investment. No, that's not a safe investment. Very safe. <laughs> buy, buy, buy. Krista is not an investor. In fact, Krista refuses to get a credit card. I don't want one. I don't trust myself. <laughs> really? I mean, I'd probably be well, fine. You think you're gonna go? I don't think you would be like no. a credit card spender. I don't like to have any debt, though. What about, what if Rue has one of those like intestinal blockages and she needs a surgery? I've and got you, money saved up for that. But you don't have enough in your checking account. There's no way I don't have enough. That can get really expensive. I already looked into it. <laughs> I've saved money, like before I got a dog, I saved money for emergency vet cost. Uh, well, since the beginning of time, if you look back at the... Roman and Greek philosophers, right? They've asked questions about where did where did we come from? What was the beginning of, of all of this? And what is the meaning of life? What is our place? Where are you going? What is our place in the universe? Well, I'm telling you, but these are questions that we've had. You've hit that the, point in the wine. Since the beginning of recorded history. And one of those questions, where's Waldo? And this robot used its computer vision to find Waldo in 4.5 seconds. The, the title here is maybe a little uh, hyper, hyper, hyperbole. Hyperbolic? Yeah. Why? I don't understand why you say that. Like, compu your computer vision. <laughs> well, why would I just <laughs> say computer like... Computer vision? That's uh, perfectly valid. That sounds weird. So this is the robot. It's got this hand. You can see the hand here. And it, of course, this one's easy because here's Waldo. I can find him. Yeah, I see him there. But in a more... I can tell by the pixels. In a more... Uh, they don't have a picture. But in a more complicated version of this, when Waldo's here in the picture, they've trained it with a shockingly small amount. They did 60 face pictures and 40 pictures of full body Waldo. He's almost always like turning toward the camera and Striped walking. Shirt, yeah. He's doing like the Bigfoot thing. like. And so this robot can find Waldo in 4.5 seconds in every instance of Waldo. They've ruined the game. I always, it's, when you go to the doctor's office and there was always that one person who took a red pen and circled Waldo, that always made oh. me angry. And I was like, dude, Why? I'm sick. I'm not feeling good. I want something to do while I wait to go to the doctor. <laughs> and you've circled Waldo. This is my six-year-old monologue. Well, this just shows how good AI is getting at facial recognition and image recognition and stuff like that. We can find Waldo. Well, let's, you know what? Let's drink to that on uh, AI eventually killing us all. Well, the, uh, I mean, it would be cool to do a background. We had trouble finding good backgrounds this week. So Somehow Wendell has configured this left monitor as a, a different orientation than the other one. And we could have fixed it, but it was one of those things that was like... Do we just do we bother? No, we don't bother. We wanted to have a cool picture of a cat back there. Yeah. Wendell has gone full throttle Linux signaling with the pictures. Oh, well, no, it's, it's all Linux anyway, which makes it more difficult Some, to change. Sometimes we, uh, we have trouble controlling his Linux signaling. <laughs> well, talking about AI, 
How about Dota 2, which neither of us ever play? Yeah, I don't play Dota 2. My boyfriend played Dota 2 for a long time. Really? Mm-hmm. When was this? Uh, a few years ago. I didn't know that. Yeah. He was into was it. He, he only played, uh, I think he only played bot matches because he was afraid to play against people oh, who wow. would scream at him. How pathetic. Yeah. Well, he got salty just playing bot matches, so. Sad. Well, he could play bot matches and lose every time if he was playing against the Dota 2 professional AI, which is now beaten pro. They were former they're pro. they're former pros, so like don't get all excited thinking like oh man he's destroying pros. Well, it's, it's like people who've been out of the game for a while. But they're all big Twitch streamers. Yeah. Because you so you think they're probably pretty good at this game. Yes. You gotta think. Now there were two caveats. That and I say fairly substantial caveats. We'll roll them out for us. So one of well I don't know about. I know one of them was that they couldn't play any character on the roster. There was a very limited. I think it was like 20 15. heroes. Oh, 15. There so are, you're not normally, even playing your best hero necessarily. Normally there are 100 characters. I had no idea that Dota had 100 I didn't characters. know they had that many characters. That's but a lot. It'd be like playing Overwatch match and then only being able to play like five characters. It's It really kind of stacks the well, deck if you're not good at any of those. It's literally 15%. It would be less yeah. than five. How many Overwatch characters? I think there's like 25 now maybe. Yeah, it'd be less than five. So... Oh. Uh, they can only pick those 15% and oh, man. I don't remember the other one. Oh, the courier was immortal. Oh, that's right. So I guess you can that's snipe the, the courier as a, a you know, a, a tactic and the AI couldn't deal with that. Yeah. So they just, they turned it off, but they, it Probably did beat them that. once. It was best of three, right? Right. I think the pros still won it though. Technically. No, the, the AI won two twice. Out of three. Oh, I thought it was, they won once. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, the AI is going to kill us all. Did we already drink for that? We did. Okay, good. Uh, okay. And, uh, yeah, they, they're learning first on Dota 2, and then later with real munitions, and then they'll kill us all. I think that with well, the skills they've learned, like farming creeps, I don't think that that <laughs> translates to real life. Well, that's but... like farming civilians. Every and then human, they go military. Right, every human you kill reduces the support that the military will get. Oh, of course. Right? Like World War II, we converted all the factories into munitions. If you don't have that, how are you going to fight the robot war? That's a good point. Yeah? Leave your comments if you think I'm wrong, but I'm not. I'm right. That could be the wine talking. But, uh... And, uh, speaking of wine talking... Birds. Engineers teach drone to herd birds away from airports. So, the, remember Sully... Captain Sully? I don't remember Sully. Actually. You don't know about Sully? No. I don't remember that story. Maybe we did. Captain Sully. Well, we didn't do it on the news, but oh. Captain Sully uh, took off and ran into a herd of geese flock. Flock? Is it a flock of geese? Yeah, a gaggle. Flock. Get, it's a gaggle of geese. Could be a gaggle. But if they're flying, I think they're flying. A group of geese gaggle. shredded one of his engines, but Sully, such a badass. Landed his plane in the Hudson River. Oh, okay. I have heard this story. Yeah, okay, yeah. I know who you're talking about now. Nobody hurt. Not a single scratch. He, the man. A pro. The most incredible pilot ever. Landed it right in the Hudson. Everybody got off. Everything was cool. So Except for the plane. Uh, the plane was fucked. But So what they're saying is, how do we prevent this? And the answer is drones that are using AI to herd birds. So you can see here like this blue line. Well, when the, there it is. When the animation starts again, we'll watch it. Come on, here we go. Oh, it takes a long time. <laughs> it's more awkward than we anticipated. <laughs> here we go. There it is. Yeah. So the drone has learned to move birds as a group. Now they knew how to uh, herd sheep, so they used oh, drones. Sheep are stupid, as we learned from Babe. Well, birds are no geniuses. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're morons too. But they, they watched how dogs herd sheep, but that is two-dimensional, right? Because with birds, you got that third dimension. They can fly up and down. Yeah. So they adapted that study to herd the birds, and they're good at it. Drones can chase them off, chase them away from the airports all by themselves autonomously. See, I think that eventually the birds will be less scared of the drone, and it will be less effective. That's well, it's like Rue when she's exposed to more flowers. She gets Couldn't, less scared of them. But we could dress the birds up as predatory birds. The birds. The, dr the drones. The drones. We'll dress the drones up as predatory birds, right? I guess that would work. 
Or maybe that would make, see, you're not thinking. So what would happen is that then they don't have a fear of the predatory bird. So when they reach one in the wild, they're not afraid of it because they think, oh, it's just that one that heard this away from the airport. And then they die and then you have a mass extinction event. And then biologists are all freaking out. Somehow it affects the bees. All the bees die. <laughs> and there we are. And then we have no wine. I'm going to take a drink for bird extinction. You know what? I'm against this. I'm against drones. You've convinced me. No more drones versus birds. Because you don't know. You don't know. If your plane, life finds a way, and so does that. If plane goes down because of a flock of birds, that's just. That's the cost of doing business. That's what it was meant to be. You were meant to die. You might be the next Hitler. And you, you were meant to die. You know what? I bet Hitler was on a plane. And somehow they circumvented the flock of birds that shouldn't have happened. And that's why we got the Holocaust. If he'd just been accepted into art school. How about this little robot? So we did a story about Cosmo uh, ages ago. It's a little tiny white robot. And that's this guy's little brother. This guy's named Vector. You know what she's saying to that robot? Pushed it 9-11. She's saying, she's saying jet fuel can't melt steel beams. That's, I love that meme. It's so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> but Vector is Cosmo's older brother, the next generation, and he has some new features. So before, Cosmo, if you're hip to Cosmo, he actually ran off of your smartphone. He was a Bluetooth connection. Vector has the chip on board. Vector is autonomous. So you can pet him. And he'll react. He'll do, I think he's a, they have a gif he's, down here. Cosmo was adorable, and I think Vector is well on track to being just as adorable as Cosmo was. They play games with you. They can sort like blocks and shapes and colors. And Look how happy this woman is. And her happiness is 100% due to Vector. Cosmo, I think you could buy him on Amazon. I think he was about $200. I'm not sure how much Vector retails for. Uh, oh, here he is being oh, petted. Look, look, at yeah, look at his little eyes. So Cosmo was 150 I think, or 175 Vector will be 250 but if you kickstart, 200 You'll save that 50 I mean... For a kid, that's kind of neat. I don't know. I think you can train Cosmo to do like basic programming logic as well. And so that might be a good thing for kids. Vector is designed to be always on, right? So he's got a charging station, which he will go back to when he needs to. Aww. And when you summon him, he's like, hey, Vector, come here. He will leave his charging station and come and interact with you. And then if you ignore him, he will explore his surroundings. Looking for weapons. <laughs> dropped, you dropped a safety pin he's, he's gonna tuck that away he's got like a a little bulldozer like lifter yeah yeah use. and that's how he interacts with like the little blocks and stuff he comes with so you can play you can play blackjack with him oh I didn't that's new yeah. Cosmo didn't do that that's new to Vector yeah, listen Vector he's new he's the, Vector sounds a little more intimidating than Cosmo I think it does not a great name it's not he sounds a little like scary like he might just yeah. pull a gun on you in the middle of the night when you think of Vector you're thinking of like Military aircraft. Yeah. That's where my mind goes. Oh, and he's like, you know, all black now. And like with his oh. little beady eyes. So are you saying that black robots are less trustworthy than regular robots? <sighs> no. Because we did a story about that. That's no, your I'm inherent saying, racism. I'm saying Matt Black has a slightly more intimidating... Like, you know, thinking about gaming computers, usually dark black, dark colors uh, with a bright RGB. And then like work computers, usually just plain white. I think we're hearing white privilege. Maybe. <laughs> or the PC industry is racist. Rue is black. Rue is, well, she's black and white. But she's she's black. ebony and ivory she's living black, in perfect right? harm. Yeah, mostly black. Yeah, so I don't feel racist toward her. No. Although I've never actually met her. You'll meet her. She's in there. She'll be on the stream tonight or Sunday, which you guys can watch after this. Well, we have, I am, uh, my nose is uh, numb. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I'm getting drunk. I think that you're um, you're like Gimli from Lord of the Rings, where like he gets super drunk on the ale, and then like Legolas is like, oh, it's starting to affect me. My fingertips feel a little weird. Yeah, I got I got some numbness in my extremities. I'm feeling fine right my now. Toes are good. If I fingers. stand up, I might feel a little well, weird. Look at your little your tiny amount of wine that you. This drink. is a lot for me. I don't drink much. This is our last story, and this has to do with design. Which, in case you didn't know. Krista claims to have some knowledge in this In this field. I do get paid as a designer in my day job. Let's look at... So this is Space Force. Now, if you don't know about Space Force... It's there uh, to combat space ISIS. <laughs> Sessions announced this week 
we're going forward. We're going to have a branch of the military that is exclusive to space. Which, here's the thing. There's no one in space to fight. That we know of. <laughs> if we fight them, I, we, let's kill them. Immediately. So don't ask any questions. So but here's the logos. Most importantly, oh... Oh, look, what you, look how tiny they are. Oh, that's terrible. Can you control Can plus? We, uh, Zoom? This shitty browser doesn't have a uh, view image URL. Well, yeah, you, you can see them here. This is, uh, so this one is basically just a rip off of NASA. NASA. See, I yeah. think my issue with these logos is that this is supposed to be a military endeavor. None of these really feel military no. to me. And they don't no. feel like United States either. Like, they're not really Absolutely red, white, blue. Absolutely not. There should be an eagle incorporated. Somewhere. Somewhere there should be an eagle. I think we should it's have. It's like Canadian, the, like Canada logos always have a maple leaf. We yeah, have to have yeah. an eagle. Right. I think we should be the moon, right? Okay. We should be the moon in the crosshairs. Oh, yeah. that actually would be cool. Yeah. I mean, that's... I, I think these are well-done logos. Like, they're well-rendered. I just don't know conceptually if they're that good. And this one says Mars awaits. Like, what the fuck is that? Well, and what happens when we need to attack, like, Pluto? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why are we focusing all of our energy on one planet? When <laughs> we could be destroying there's, all of There's them. so many that we could be destroying. <laughs> uh, so there's some guy who's campaigning, mm. and he's going to be in charge of Space Force. I don't know. It, this came out in an email... These logos are garbage. Krista likes. I don't think that they're garbage. Which I think they're one did they're you well like done. I just don't think that they are meet the brief. You like the blue one, which is like a preschool. No, no, no. It's it's the the second. This one. Second, yeah. There you go. Second that's row. The, that's the light blue one. Yeah, I think that one looks nice. Nah, I mean at least it's a shield, so that's something. Yeah. But look at this little stupid shuttle here. That's not. Intimidating. The other thing that you run into with all of these logos is that they're not going to reduce down to one color, which is a big issue with logos, especially if they want to get it embroidered on their space well, uniforms. Yeah. So I was thinking about like Army is the star, right? Mm -hmm. And Marines is the Chevron. Yeah. What's Navy? I don't know what Navy is. A boat. But those are very simple. Yeah, yeah. That's a big thing in logo design is making yeah. sure it reduces down to one color. So that way it'll work if you have to put it in a newspaper. It works if you have to embroider it on a shirt. Like none of these really meet that criteria. They're, they're kind of nice conceptually, but they're not really meeting the brief of something that would be military. Although everything that's going to go into space is going to cost like, you know, a billion dollars. So you can spend a couple of bucks painting it. <laughs> <laughs> or well, I mean, or maybe doing embroidery in two colors instead yeah. of one. But, I mean, like a spacesuit, you know. It's but like, of, like <laughs> of the things that you want to spend money on in a space program, is embroidery for your uniforms really like top priority? But I I'm, would argue no. I'm doubling down. I think the moon and crosshairs. I do think that would be cool. I think that's and maybe like an eagle somewhere. An eagle over the moon. Maybe, yeah. All right. Well, that's our last story for Wednesday, and let me tell you. I am more drunk. I'm going to do a end of episode drink. End of, end of episode I'll, drink. I'll take one. All right. Hit my teeth with my plastic bottle. Mm. Uh, tomorrow, not tomorrow, Friday, we're going to be doing security. Krista loves security stories. That's my least favorite. <laughs> Cryptocurrency, security, and sometimes hardware is interesting, but, but those are like my three least favorite categories. Here's the thing about it. Security stories always require a drink. So it's going to be a, a spiral. I'm probably going to go through this whole bottle, gonna, which I did not think I would it's do. It's going to be a spiral on Friday. And uh, security and hardware. We haven't done hardware yet, right? No. I don't hardware think so. and nonsense, which is everybody's favorite. Nonsense has some good stories this week. So tune in for that and witness the, the, the spiral. The cold and I might finish this bottle, which... That's bad. Yeah. That's really bad. That's like a... This is why we don't do this very often. That's like an intervention. Probably. Wendell has to stop traveling so much <laughs> is what that means. But once I'll reiterate, you guys have asked for more. You said, let's see everybody else drinking. So... Here I am. Here we go. Krista. This is like... I literally, I think I counted how many times I've drank. This is probably the fifth time I've drank this year. We're in August now. Wow. I don't, don't drink much. All for you. Look what we do for you. And you don't even have the decency Stop. to upvote. Store that level one tech talk. <laughs> it's fine. We'll see you on Bye. Friday. <laughs>